Good morning, everyone. My name is Robin Dolezal. With me, as always, is Alex Pars and David Renzi. Together, we are with Ironwood Financial. We meet with a ton of people who are interested in this topic today. Uh, you know, Alex, it's funny, we, we mentioned this before, but this is a topic that's pretty fun. But most people actually spend more time planning their vacation than they do on this topic, which is retirement planning. Have you heard this before? I, you know, I've heard that through the years. I don't know if it's actually true, but it's, you know, it sounds plausible. I know the amount of time we spend with all the different excursions, the which Airbnb, you know, which flights, even the flights, geez. <laughs> I mean, in my household, that's definitely true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which connection yeah. do you want? Uh, so yes, retirement planning, a lot of people don't put enough time into it. And it's, it's actually something you really should put a bunch of time into because it probably will last more than your, hopefully, will last longer than your next vacation. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just a it's a huge topic, and I think people just don't know where to start. So I think today what we should do is talk about some of the you know the key topics and and things that people should address and how to make this a little bit easier on them. Absolutely, I think something that most people don't consider either is that nowadays uh, pensions are becoming less and less prevalent. So the burden of retirement is on you. <laughs> Nobody else is going to be there to help you in your future. It used to be you work for a company for thirty years. You get a birthday, or not a birthday cake, but a retirement cake and a gold watch, and then you just go off and you continue to pay you for the rest of your life. And unfortunately for the younger generations, I don't know that they realize it yet, but it's gonna be 100% on them. I mean, you constantly hear complaints about what's going on with Social Security, and is it gonna be insolvent, is it not, what are they gonna do? And I don't wanna get into that now, but suffice to say, it's very important that you have a plan, and I would say don't count on Social Security. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, it, it, you know, it did used to be a lot easier. <laughs> it's actually kind of gone 180 on us uh, for people in general retirement planning. So, all right, so the first thing when someone decides they want to retire, um, I mean, let's talk about income, right? That's probably the first part. What kind of income are you going to have in retirement? Um, obviously, I mean, there's a, there's still a few who have a pension, right? It's not completely gone, uh, but that would obviously be the first thing to look at if you have any pension money coming in. And does that pension have a you know cost of living uh, arrangement? Does it increase, right? Uh, you mentioned the other one, which is Social Security. Let's just assume on today's podcast that it's going to be around. <laughs> sure. sure. And I think it probably will. I mean, remember, uh, typically people who uh, have more time on their hands tend to vote, uh, and people who are retired tend to have a little more time on their hands than people who are working. So I wouldn't be too worried about Social Security. Remember when they first implemented it, it was, what, a 1% tax? And now it's up to, what, 13 and change? So mm -hmm. was it 15 and change? It's one of the two, it's, it's a lot higher than it was. Right. Uh, so, so one thing that, uh, you know, if you look up retirement planning, one of the things that often comes up is, you know, what are the five things you need to think about when you're planning for retirement? Uh, yeah. and, and what Robin was saying really is the first question, which is you need to figure out where you're going. And that's something very few people actually put a lot of thought into. They're like, how much should I put into my 401k? How should I invest? That's not the question. The question that you first need to come up with is how much money do I need to have in retirement? And that's, of course, you know, one of the most difficult questions to answer because most people don't know how much money they spend today. Um, so. A good starting point, though, is if you can figure out how much money you spend today, that's a good starting point for how much you're going to need in retirement once you adjust for inflation. So most people don't go from being big spenders their whole life to being frugal in retirement or vice versa. So that's a really good starting point. And you need to come up with a number. And if that number is, you know, let's say $5,000 a month, just round numbers, well, that's a, that's a good starting point. We need to figure out how we get there. Yeah, I think I think one of the easy things or easy ways of calculating this is everyone thinks, hey, I have to get every single receipt for the last year, or last couple of years to get an average. And we tell people, no, it's not that complicated. The easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is to start with a net worth statement. So say, hey, every January or every six months, you put an Excel spreadsheet together, use one of the various apps, and then you say, hey, here's what my account values are. And then from there, you look at either you've had gains or losses, but you look at what you're adding to your accounts versus your income. And so if you're yeah. not saving it, then you're spending it. And that's an easy way of tracking it. And it also helps you because I've heard this. I, don't, I didn't look into the studies myself, but they said once people start tracking that net worth and their spending, then they instantly spend 20% less. <laughs> 
So I, I think mm, it's interesting. I think it's like counting your calories, right? When you when you know how many calories are in that donut, you're less likely to consume it. So there are, <laughs> there are definitely some. Don't some, tell me. Yeah. I don't want to know. <laughs> there are definitely some tricks into getting this done in a more efficient way than pulling out every single receipt or writing down every single purchase. It is amazing how, I mean, even if it's, I don't know, if it's not even just retirement planning or financial planning, it's, it is amazing how the budget is what drives everything. It is kind of the most important piece that people need to know. And it is, it is tough to know, but uh, those are uh, some great ways of, of trying to figure out what you are spending on a monthly basis. So, so, so step two, once you figure out where you're going, you need to figure out where you are. Okay, yeah. And that's another question that really astounds me. I mean, how, long is that, how often do we get someone come in, okay, how much do you have saved for retirement? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they have no yeah. idea how much is in their account. Not even to the closest, oh, it's round to the next closest 10,000, no idea. Okay, right. so you need to know where you are and you need to know where you're going. Those are the first two steps. Uh, and where you are is pretty easy. You know, how much do you have it for retirement? What sort of debts do you have? When are those gonna be paid off, et cetera? Um, and then after that, step three is figuring out, okay, how do I bridge that gap? Okay, and that is where you have to do some you know, future value of money calculations, assumed rates of returns, and so on and so forth in order to calculate how you get from step one to step in, uh, to the end point, if you will. And that is going to involve a, a good calculation will come up with a number that they'll tell you how much you need to save on a monthly basis. Yeah, you, you can usually do some of these things on, you know, let's just say, you know, your 401k is at Fidelity. They might have some sort of calculator that might give you a good good step. Most financial advisors are able to help with that as well. They've got their own software that they can use and, and know what to ask you, what to input, and will help you get there as well. And I think something that's important is to make sure that you're conservative in your assumptions or vary the degrees of return and inflation and potentially lifespan. So most people come in and they think, hey, my parents died in their 70s. I'm never going to live to age 90. And I say, well, based on your current demographic, your lifespan should be better than your parents. And so it's, it's, it's definitely difficult, right? Because no one wants to say, hey, let's, let's have a poor performing portfolio for the rest of my life and then have me living forever. Because obviously the projections aren't as pretty. But it is very important right. to stress test that. And, that. and that's really, I think, step four when you're doing this is making sure that you have realistic expectations, realistic assumptions. Because right. so often do we see people come in like, oh, I'm gonna get 12% per year every year, okay? Um, and that's just not gonna happen. Uh, you know, we, you know, what's funny is David and I were actually having this conversation yesterday. We were sitting down with someone who, who came in and said, uh, I've got a million dollars saved up for retirement. I think I'm doing fine. And once we went through her budget, she was spending a half a million dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's great you've saved, but <laughs> that's only going to last you two years. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, so realistic expectations. And then the, you know, the final step, in my opinion, is you, you need to, you know, figure out how you're going to invest the money. And that's, that can be, you know, a myriad of different ways, whatever is comfortable to you. And there's tons and tons of research on that, but not something we want to put a ton of time into in this video. Uh, but suffice it to say, generally when you're talking about what we call real money, uh, you want to use standard investments. Okay, a lot of times people come in and they're managing their own money and they're doing really weird stuff. That yeah. they, you know, something that's like, oh, my buddy says this is going to be a 10x opportunity or I'm going to double my money next week. That's generally not where you want to put your retirement assets. Generally, you want to put your retirement assets in something that you can count on and that is time tested and proven. Okay, if you've got a right. play account, that's where that funny stuff goes. And maybe you'll strike it rich, but you know, we've been doing this now, I've been doing this, what, 25 years? And I can't think of one of those that's worked, <laughs> at least right. long term. Something else that's important to consider is balancing long term goals with short term goals. So it's often the case that people will come in and they say, hey, it's very important to me to pay for my kid's college or pay for a wedding or pay for a sweet 16 with a car and a big party. And something to consider is that you can't take loans in your retirement. So once you're retired and that income is gone, hey, guess what? You gotta, manage, you gotta rely on your portfolio. So 
sometimes you have to have tough conversations with your kids. Like, hey, you, the burden of college or the burden of your wedding might be on you. So it's it's yeah. a it's a tough balance. Yeah, it's a good point. You, you know, what David's saying is you, you can't finance your retirement. You can't <laughs> you can't take a retirement loan. You know, your your child might be able to get a, a loan for college. I mean, obviously you can do that. I think so. they give those out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I think I've heard something about student loans. <laughs> right. Um. Right. <laughs> Anyway, but make sure that, you know, if retirement is coming, we need to make that a priority uh, over other things that might be able to be financed, like a college education, things like that. Yeah, that, there's another topic that comes up a lot that you hear about, you know, and this is just a really quick and dirty approach to uh, retirement planning, but not something that I would, you know, hang my hat on, but there's something called the 4% rule, which right. is a very common term bandied about, which is if you've got, you know, let's say, Whatever your retirement account is worth, you Call can take a million four, dollars. Yeah, yeah, a million bucks. You can take four percent of that per year, so that'd be twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Now, there's a lot of flaws with that. Well, four percent in a what? That's forty thousand dollars a year. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking a different number there. So forty thousand dollars a year, and the the benefit to this four percent rule is it's really fast, and you can come up with a quick answer quickly. However, there are a lot of flaws, and it is probably a bit on the conservative side. Um, finally. So, uh, so some, yeah, finally, right? So some people think of that as being uh, a bad indicator or a bad way of looking at it because it discourages people from living their lives and makes people work too long and save too much because they think, oh, I don't have enough. And the reality is, particularly as you get into your older years, the 4% rule is a bit, is definitely conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're 75 years old, you don't need to worry about the 4% rule. Um, right. You can use a much higher percentage distribution sure. and expect to have a successful retirement. Yeah, and uh, the reason I said finally, obviously, it, it depends on where interest rates are at, right? We were, for years, in such a low interest rate environment that I mean, 4% at, you know, if you're age 50 might have been a little too too aggressive. But now people can go get 4% in a money market, so, you know, that's a lot easier to do. And I think something that's important to consider is the impact of taxes on your 4%. So most people think, hey, I have a million dollars in a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, and I can take $40,000 a year. Well, <laughs> that's not exactly true. It depends on what tax rates, you're, what tax bracket you're in and what your other income sources are. And that really definitely reduces uh, some of the potential in terms of what your portfolio can produce and the income that you can derive from it going forward. You know, what type of what type of accounts you have, right? You know, a lot of people do have four hundred one ks or IRAs. It's very common, but any money that you're taking, which you were just alluding to, is taxable. But if you have other types of accounts like Roth IRAs that are not taxable, well, that can help uh, benefit you as well, uh, tax wise. Even just a brokerage account that's you know not taxed at ordinary income tax rates is very favorable as well. Yeah. So there's there's lots to talk about in retirement planning, but really. Uh, just to sum it up, I would say you need to actually think about it and you need to do something about it as opposed to saying, oh, that's 50 years away because once you get to 45, 50 years old, which is when it seems like most people start thinking about it, it's going to be a lot harder than if you started thinking about it a lot sooner. Right. Um, so, so start doing it now. Now is better than tomorrow, is better than the next week. Start figuring out where you want to get to and how you're going to get there because if you don't have a plan, you're probably not gonna succeed. Well, thank you gentlemen for your insight. Uh, folks, if this is something you wanna learn more about or you have more questions regarding your own personal situation, please feel free to use this as a resource. We're happy to answer those correct questions. You can find us at ironwoodfinancial.com or you can reach us at 520-318-4600. Thanks guys.